If you look at a map of the African continent, you'll see that one of the world's largest deserts is located in the north. This place, unlike the rest of the continent, isn't as welcoming as you'd hope for. Transforming a desert into a lush green forest sounds like something out of a Disney film. Given that we're talking about 3.3 million square miles of sand, this seems like a crazy concept. If it were possible, it would solve many of the world's environmental issues and make living easier for future generations. While it is physically conceivable to transform a desert into a forest, the procedure would most likely take decades. It makes you wonder if it's even conceivable, or if this is just a load of nonsense. Scientists are putting their heads together and have developed a strategy to accomplish this. So, in this video, join us as we look at how scientists intend to accomplish this miracle. The Sahara comes to mind when most people think of a classic desert environment, complete with scorching sun, rippling sand, and hidden oases. Most people are familiar with the Sahara Desert, which is the world's largest scorching desert and the third largest desert after the Arctic and Antarctica. The Sahara is covered with so much sand that it covers an area the size of China or the United States. It wasn't always covered with sand though. What we currently know as the world's largest hot desert would have been unrecognizable around 7 million years ago when the Sahara Desert was covered by a gigantic sea called Tethys. So what happened to all that water? According to some of the most recent computer simulations of Earth's early climate, the movement of tectonic plates that created the Mediterranean Sea and the Alps also caused the Sahara Desert to dry up roughly 7 million years ago. This was the beginning of a beautiful and green forest with lakes, rivers, meadows, and even woods dotting the landscape, which was covering most of the African continent 11,000 years ago. So how did this landscape turn into a hot desert? As strange as it sounds, perhaps humans and their goats shifted the scales, kickstarting this enormous ecological transformation, according to archaeologist David Wright. Wright argues in a recent study published in the journal Frontiers in Earth Science that humans may be the answer to a question that has puzzled archaeologists and paleoecologists for years. Wright discovered a pattern when he looked through the archaeological and environmental data, primarily sediment cores and pollen records from the same time period. There was a similar alteration in the sorts and variety of plants wherever the archaeological record revealed the presence of pastoralists. Every time humans and their goats and cattle hopped across grasslands, they had turned everything to scrub and desert in their wake. This, according to Wright, is exactly what caused the decertification of the Sahara Desert. They were limiting the quantity of atmospheric moisture. Plants give off moisture, which generates clouds, and boosting albedo by overgrazing the grasslands, Wright explained. He believes this may have precipitated the end of the humid period more suddenly than orbital shifts could explain. These nomadic humans may have also utilized fire as a land management tool, which may have accelerated the decertification. Due to overgrazing and droughts in the region, the Sahara Desert was rapidly growing. This land loss caused many other issues such as hunger, poverty, unemployment, forced migration, and conflict, as well as an increased risk of extreme weather events. But according to geologist Jessica Tierney, an associate professor of geoscience at the University of Arizona, the Green Sahara would have changed back into a desert even if humans hadn't intervened. That's how the Earth's orbit works. Tierney also claims that humans aren't required to explain the abruptness of the shift from green to desert. Typical vegetation feedbacks and the fluctuations in the amount of dust could be the causes. Tierney adds, at first, you have this slow change in the Earth's orbit. As a result of this, the West African monsoon will weaken a little bit. Slowly, the scenery will deteriorate, changing from desert to greenery. Then, at some time, you reach the tipping point where things begin to shift. So how has the Sahara Desert turned into a green forest today? The method of transforming deserts into forests is known as desert greening or reforestation and has been ongoing for some years. Even the Sahara Desert is gradually becoming green. This is the process of humans reclaiming deserts for agricultural, forestry, and other ecological reasons such as biodiversity. It benefits the ecosystem and reduces the environmental damage caused by humans. We can assist slowdown of the process of climate change, among other things, by converting deserts to forests, at least partially.
Several landscaping techniques are utilized during the reforestation with the purpose of reducing erosion, evaporation, and topsoil consolidation. They also help in lowering temperatures and reducing the appearance of sandstorms. Permaculture is also employed, and it entails the collection of rainwater in order to cultivate plant communities of diverse types. This practice is known as polyculture, and it entails planting multiple types of plants at the same time. Planting trees as well as other salt-luffing plants is one of the most important strategies of transforming deserts into forests. This is done because the water these plants need to survive often comes from the ocean. Experts working on desert greening are also attempting to restore polluted, salty, or degraded soils, which can assist in the growth of new plants. Greenhouses are also important in this process, and their agriculture contributes significantly to desert forestation. All of these processes, and many more, come together in a variety of initiatives to turn deserts green, which would be extremely beneficial to our world. One person that made a major difference in turning the desert green is Tony Renato, also known as the Forest Maker. He's an Australian agronomist working on greening the Sahara Desert for decades. After years of living and working in African countries, he has identified and implemented a solution to the Sahara's catastrophic deforestation and decertification. After 30 years, his method, which he compares to cutting a wine vine back to just one or two stems each season, has been given a name, Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration, or FMNR. Renato is known for creating a method for growing trees from existing root systems, which are often still intact, and which he refers to as an underground forest. Farmers can help plants grow into trees by selecting the correct plants, trimming, and safeguarding them in specific ways. Renato's success has been based on his ability to change people's views. He realized that if the forest had been reduced to a desolate environment, it would be necessary to restore it. In Niger alone, Renato's farmer-managed natural regeneration system has restored 50,000 square kilometers of land and planted over 200 million trees. It has the ability to repair dry lands that are currently damaged over an area the size of India. Renato was able to convince 10 farmers from 10 communities to support his idea to allow trees to grow across the land that had been intensively farmed for decades. A drought prompted a work for food program which attracted skeptics. However, when farmland yields improved gradually, the new technique took off. Renato has since then sparked a farmer-led movement in the Sahara region and beyond that is re-greening land. On satellite photographs from orbit, the reforestation of the landscape can even be seen. Isn't that amazing? The trees, according to Renato, increase agricultural production, lower ground temperatures, and keep water in the soil. They offer firewood and make farming more comfortable in areas where the temperature often exceeds 40 degrees Celsius. Also, the trees operate as a major carbon sink, according to Renato, with the potential to absorb billions more tons of carbon. It's no wonder that this ingenious yet easy technology is spreading throughout Africa, positively affecting the environment and the people who live there. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit the notification button to make sure not to miss any of our content about reforestation and decertification across the world. Thank you for watching. See you next time.